And when they seen that, they started storming the court. They started throwing lighters. They started storming the court. And they literally, the police officers and whatever, they could not stop them from storming the court and physically attacking the players. Like they literally physically attacked the players. It was like an all out riot. Things was going crazy. <laughs> My boy said he went inside the closet in the in the equipment room in the closet because he was like <laughs> he had to go high and get up out that situation. Even though he was at home, you just don't know. What are you thinking? Yeah. What are you thinking? Yeah. If you wanna know my thoughts, open your ears when I talk. Yeah. What are you thinking? Hey. What are you thinking? Hey. If you wanna know my thoughts, open your ears when I talk. Yeah. Hey. What's good, everybody? Back with another edition of the Arnold's Thoughts podcast. And on this segment, we are going to be going over a Q and A segment. A nice Q and A segment. You know, right now we are at the beginning of the season and you know, this is the beginning of the new year. So I feel like it is time that we answer some questions to get guys who might want to know a little bit more about the life, who want to know a little bit about the things that's going on. So I always try to answer some questions, some hard questions, some questions that people may be interested to help them along their journey. Now, if this is your first time, I do, put majority of my videos on YouTube. So if you are watching this on YouTube, please do me a favor, hit the subscribe. If you're listening on Apple, Spotify, wherever you is, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe, follow along and share this with someone who wants to prepare for a life of overseas basketball one day. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into it and get straight into the Q and A segment. So I'm gonna start off by um, the first question. The first question is, how do you deal with a team saying you can't go home after there has been a death in your family? What should you do? Now, I pose this question because I was on Instagram and I seen another guy who, he doesn't really talk a lot about the overseas basketball life, but once you're a player, the older you get in the game, the more you wanna talk about the stuff that goes on and the more stuff that goes on, you try to inform the guys that is entering the life and one day wants to pursue this career. And he posed that question because he said that overseas basketball is probably one of the hardest sports or one of the hardest jobs to do. And a lot comes with that. And that he asked he asked that question and I figured I would ask that question, uh, go over that question as well. Like, what do you do? when like you have a family met a death in your family and your team does not allow you to go home i believe in those moments you have to make a very crucial decision on what you believe or what your priorities are in life because this is just this is a love and a passion but it isn't your entire life and a lot of times guys come over here and they start playing and they forget about their life back at home. And you have to prioritize what is more important to you. Is it your family? Um, for me, it's my family. A similar situation has happened with me. I lost my mother, I, not my mother, sorry. I'm not speaking that. I lost my grandma and I lost my father. I lost both of them while playing the game, while playing overseas. And both times it wasn't even a, a question like it wasn't even a thought process it wasn't not i didn't even waste one second like i'm out of here i'm out of here i'm not wasting no time i'm not sticking around because my family is the most important thing to me and when this basketball ends when this life ends when this career ends the people that are left standing around you are what matters to most and for me it's my family if it has to do with my daughter my mom any of my close relatives my best friend, I'm gone. Because those are the people that have been with me through it all. And these teams and organizations at times don't really care about what you got going on in your life. They only care about that what you can do for them. On my last video I posted, I told you there ain't no love in this game. They don't really care about what you got going on. 
and what you have with your personal life and the things that you got going on in your personal life is you come here, we pay you, and you need to do what we say because we're giving you money. It's like you are a tool to them. You're a tool, and as long as we paying you, you have to get right and do what we say. Nah, I ain't going. I'm not going. Me personally. So in when faced with that situation, if you are ever facing that situation, you got to always think about what is the most important thing to you. A, a family, a death in the family, you know what I'm saying? Like, especially if it's someone close. When my father passed, you think I even thought twice? When my grandma passed, I didn't think twice. I don't care what y'all got going on. No amount of money can take away the feeling and like that what that means to me in my life when well, moving on moving on are you interested in playing overseas basketball one day i wish someone would have told me one year after college i would receive my first pro gig i wish someone would have told me that having an agent does not guarantee that you will get hired i wish someone would have told me being cut from a team because after 10 years in this game everyone gets cut from a team now after traveling from over 17 different countries and winning up to seven championships in my pro career i've put together the six most important traits any player needs before starting their career so go ahead and grab that ebook and get all the information you need today to start your career now you can't say no one didn't let you know so go ahead grab that ebook and get started so you can become the pro one day let's go what do you do if you are in a game and your team is attacked physically by the fans? Now, I pose this question because I literally posted a clip from one of an uh, interview that me and my best friend, Deuce Deuce, Tap Athletics, make sure y'all tap into him. He has a lot of good content on basketball he i posted a clip of me and him today talking about how when he was in a situation and like he was in tunisia and the fans started spitting on them and they started throwing bricks and they started throwing things at them while in the game literally today they had a basketball game literally today and one of the players he's in zaho iraq so he's in Iraq and he called me, he, we were chopping it up and he was telling me, and I actually got a clip of that that I'm going to post later, um, probably tomorrow or whatever. But it's just showing, he was telling me the whole breakdown of the situation. We, going, we have to get an interview later going on about that so he can just like explain to y'all exactly what happened and all the situation that would happen. It was crazy. He was like, one of the te other team made a gesture and in Iraq, it's primarily a lot of men that go to the the games and to the function. And when they seen that, they started storming the court. They start throwing lighters. They start storming the court, and they literally the police officers and whatever they could not stop them from storming the court and physically attacking the players. Like they literally physically attacked the players. It was like an all-out riot. Things was going crazy. <laughs> My boy said he went inside the closet in the in the equipment room in the closet because he was like <laughs> he had to go high and get up out that situation. Even though he was at home, you just don't know. When people get in type and when when things are going down and going crazy like that, bro, you gotta protect yourself, bro. Don't don't listen. Don't put yourself in harm's way for a game because these people ain't got nothing they don't care about if people are willing to literally physically fight you for a gesture in a game a physical game don't be don't be out here putting your life on the line and like oh i'm finna no bro you gotta understand you in another country especially bros in iraq you feel me i can't even imagine they might be wanting to get some payback from all these years. This is my chance. I ain't going. I ain't going. I ain't going. Listen, bro, don't don't be out here trying to be He-Man. Matter of fact, one of, a new guy on my team just told me the other day he was in Mexico and 
one of the players, he was talking trash to one of the opposing teams. And that dude told him straight up, bro, you can get killed out here. Like, it, it really be real like that out here, man. Like, sometimes you got to be real and let y'all know for real. Like, bro, don't come out here really thinking that I'm, like, I'm from here and I'm from here and this, this, that, and the third. No, bro, don't do that. Don't do that, bro. Like, stuff going down. Like, don't be wilding out in these other countries thinking that you, you can do whatever you want to do at any time and it's sweet. Don't be doing that. Like, protect yourself. Mind yourself. Like, I broke all this down in my book that I that I um promote the, the six must-have traits to become an overseas basketball player. And it's just telling you how to respond and how to act when you're in these type of situations, bro. You really have to change. Like, you really got to act right, bro. All that, I'm from this hood and that hood. Bro, people out here really getting attacked. Like, they really will do something to you out here. They really will do something and put hands on you. They said the guys, they couldn't leave the locker room for about an hour, two hours after the game because the fans were still there trying to get at them and the police couldn't contain them. These types of situations really happen in real life and you really got to understand, like, bro, don't be putting yourselves in harm's way when these... Like these, some of these fans be, this ain't the States. You attack the players and then there's a fine and this, uh, no, bro, they don't care about that. They don't care about that. They don't care about nothing about that. They're going to do that and they ain't going to get no repercussions. They, they, they think different. They really want to put hands on you. They really out there like, I'll really do something to you for real, for real. You will be found missing. They on that type of time. So if they were ever in that scenario, bro, like just get the safety. Don't even try to entice and be like, oh, I'm at, I'm at them. Y'all can't like, I don't know why, why some guys be feeling like, man, as soon as I step into another place that I'm better than y'all and I can do this, this, that, and the third. No, don't, don't be like that, bro. Like you out here to do a job, mind your business, competitive keep it on the court especially if you on the road this has happened to me various of times in the on the road deficit we ain't even retaliated we just was out there trying to win we beat the team they we had to get escorted off by police just because we won the game and they was mad now imagine if we was out there enticing them even more we would probably never like you don't know what these people like some of these people don't have like they take it to another level they took it to another level should you have a serious relationship when you are in another country? Yeesh. Yeesh. Now that's a question. Should you be in a serious relationship when you're in another country? I can honestly say majority of all of my relationships have been with other individuals in another country. And all of them have not worked out well. Does that stop me from trying? It's kind of like a weird situation because I spend majority of my time overseas. And just like, okay, in the States, it's like you've been, I've been so accustomed to these type of relationships and how people think that you get tired of it. And you'd be like, you go to see some of these other countries, bro, and these... Like for me, speaking on me or just males in perspective, I know fe I, I can't speak on the female perspective for the Hoopers, but like these guys, like some of these females, they, they have that old home style, like I'm gonna take care of you type attitude. I'm gonna cook and clean for you. They don't be on that. I need a high value man and I gotta do all this. Like, bro, that joint is it's washed. That joint is washed. So sometimes guys be like, you know what, man, I might as well be with old girl and, you know, see what it can do. But then you got to really weigh out all the situations because now you could be put in a situation where you make bad decisions because you in love. I, can, I only speak from my own, my own circumstances that has happened to me. This has happened to me. Fell in love. Made a bad decision, stayed overseas, ended up getting deported, ended up not seeing my daughter for over a year and a half, 
wasn't able to see my, my only daughter's birth because I made one decision because I decided that I was in love and I wanted to be with this relationship with someone else. And that one decision caused me the birth of seeing my, of seeing my daughter. Am I, am I here to tell someone who and who they should love and who they shouldn't do and what relationship they shouldn't get into? Absolutely not. All I'm saying is you got to really weigh out the possibilities of what can happen and like weigh it all out. You have to be really, I would say, bro, if you're going to make that decision, be fully committed. Like I'm going to do this 100 million percent because... You're going to have to worry about, okay, if your life is in the States, if your life is in UK, if your life is in, you know, a whole other country, and then you're dating someone on the other side of the world, maybe they don't have, you're going to have to worry about, okay, now I got to get their travel, I got to get them a visa or a passport. And then they're not used to traveling. They're not used to traveling like you are. They're not used to different cultures and stuff like you are as a, as a pro or that lifestyle is different because most of the times when guys arrive in other countries, they're adapting to that culture, but they know they're going back. You're literally taking someone and immersing them into a whole different lifestyle. Or maybe you just decide that you're going to go live in another lifestyle as well. All I'm saying is these are the things that you must take into, into context. You must take these things into context because this is your life. You are affecting someone else's life. And we can't just be out here just thinking that, oh, I can just, you know, for the time being. Don't do that, bro. You have to start thinking more like with the future in mind of what you really want. Because people's lives are intact. Don't be out here being no heartbreaker too. I'm just out here like, People, it's, it's, it's a real question that you must ask yourself and weigh out all the pros and cons and have that real conversation with your significant other. Like, can we really do this? How are we going to do this? Too many times guys just come and just, I can't tell you how many times guys come and have a relationship with people overseas and then they have kids and then they never see them again. I refuse. You hear me? I refuse. Me personally, I would never live that life and just... Like, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this 100%. Like, and make that decision. Next question. And I get this question because I've listened to Jose Colorado. He's a big advocate. He also has a podcast. He also does a lot of information on the overseas basketball life. And he actually dropped a video today saying, if you've been searching for... A team you've been reaching out to teams you've been trying to get on you've been trying to make like find a team for months and maybe over a year and you finally get your off like somebody finally say okay we're gonna give you a chance but the contract is only a thousand dollars seven hundred dollars I had a guy say they offered him five hundred dollars a month each five hundred dollars a month do you take the contract for the chance? If you're asking me personally, I, I can't speak on what some guy's love of the game is. If you love the game that much and you just, it's been your dream all your life to just be able to touch another country one time and play for another team and just live the life of an overseas basketball and you have the opportunity and you're like, I don't care what it cost i don't care what the price is whatever if that's your prerogative if that's what you want then you do what you got to do but there is a lot that comes with that one getting labeled he spoke on that too you getting labeled because you setting your price because these teams gonna talk he got paid this so he's automatically worth this so that means like oh he's just thirsty he's just so thirsty to take anything so that means that you know what you're not finna like even if you have an amazing season let's say you average 25 and 9 and 8 have a great season win MVP your next contract might only be like $200 more you're not just gonna be like oh now I get to get five six thousand dollars a month 
10,000. Oh, no, no, no. Because you set your price. You just told the market what you're worth. You just told the market what you're willing to do in this game. So now you must stick with your choices. And now you, hey, now if you want to continue up in your career, you're going to have to grind and grind and grind. I, I don't know how many times I ran into young guys, rookies, one or two year players who's like, man, I, I was hooping, man, and I got to get to the money. It don't just happen like that. Like once you have one decent season, let's just say a decent season. Let's just say you average for a big man. Let's just say you average 17 and 11 in a second division somewhere. Second division Argentina. Perfect example. One of the guys, me and him was talking, he was a big man, second division Argentina. And I don't even think he averaged that. But he played well. And he felt like, you know what, I got to get to the money. My bag needs to increase. No, you need to grind. You need to grind because one season doesn't de determine on what type of player you are. They got to see you for time after time. You have to put on, you have to really like accomplish a lot to really move up. Sometimes some guys catch a break early and get seen in the right position and they courageous take off. Some guys... You're going to have to grind for five, six years before you can get five, four thousand dollars a month. Some guys never even break that. Sometimes you might move up to just only averaging for five, six years, three grand a month. You have to be cool with that. You set your price. You let the market know what you what you are worth. You saying this is what I'm worth. This is what I'm going to do. You got to grind. So taking that low money, just know what you're doing. You letting the market know what you're worth. And don't be expecting like to move up so fast or move up at all. You can get stuck right there and never move up because it's like ain't nobody gonna pay for that. You, I don't care how good you is, you a five hundred, six hundred, fifteen hundred dollar player max. Are you willing to play fifteen hundred dollars for your entire career playing overseas basketball? I don't know about that one. I don't know about that one. Moving on, man, to the next question. How do you mentally prepare for the culture shock and social isolation, especially in places where there is a language barrier? And as I was saying, I was speaking with my best friend, um, Deuce Deuce, and he was telling me just on how when he got to France, he started learning a little bit of the language. He's now, as he's in Iraq now, everything, every single thing that he picks up, cup, uh, cup of tea whatever it is he's asking hey what does this mean what does that mean you can't fall back and expect to learn something and expect to thrive because a lot of the times these people these these teams these organizations they're not just looking for a player that's just really good all the time they're looking for someone that's going to communicate with the team that's going to be open and willing to actually say hey i'm going to you know, attempt to get along with my teammates. I'm a attempt to say, you know what? I'm in your country, so I'm at least going to try to learn your language. I, I, like I say, check out my book. I break, I break those steps. I break that down on how you can just handle language barrier. He was like, in front. He went to France. He was like, they in their culture, they feel like it's disrespectful for you to be in their country and not try to speak their language and so you have to get out of your comfort zone pick up pick up an app i'm not promoting duolingo if y'all hear this hey i will be a sponsor i don't mind <laughs> because i i've used duolingo in in south america y ahora yo puedo hablar espanol Suficiente para hablar con ellos y cuando es un problema yo puedo hablar con ellos because I decided you know what while I'm over here I might as well try to learn the language and you know what make myself better how great is it to be able to talk and communicate with someone else and have and add another just notch under your belt that improves you as a player that improves you as a person to be able to have a whole different language that you get a chance to learn don't be so secluded 
and not just get out of your comfort zone. Moving on. I'm going to go ahead and close off this live. I have been screaming live if y'all was on there. Um, y'all going to have to check out the rest of the episode um, on YouTube or wherever it is. Excuse me while I drink this tea. Moving on, man. Professional sports can be both physically and mentally taxing. How do you maintain your mental health, especially when dealing with the pressures of performance? This game of basketball is so, of overseas basketball, it is so tough on your mental because you are on a chopping block at all times. If you don't perform, you get sent home. If you don't perform, you lose your job. You can get caught. I was just talking to my new teammate, a guy from the crib. When we say from the crib, basically from America, we live in the same area. And we was just talking about, you know, when you get, if you get cut right in that one section of the year where guys are not or teams are not hiring again, and you do not have a good resume or you're just starting your career out, you might not play until the whole next start of the year, and then you ain't got nothing to show for it. A lot of times you just want to be on so you can just be showing your talents for the next team. Every game is showing yourself and you're putting on display for someone who may be watching for your next opportunity every game. So you have to perform. So you have to always be on point because it gets stressful you have a bad game one or two games and you're like man they might send me home what i'm gonna do me personally i just i learned to stay present in the moment and i've started doing a lot of meditating and praying and just understanding that you know everything is just a part of the journey every step along the way is just a part of the journey and this game is very tough on your mental because you know you have to perform. You perform. You're providing for your family. You're providing for your new life. This is your career. You want to do well. You know, and it's like that stress and that pressure on you can make a lot of guys break and crack. And you want to not let that because you want to play so good that you actually don't play well because you're putting too much pressure on yourself and not even enjoying the game because you're putting so much pressure on yourself to perform at a high level and think that oh i'm better than them so why aren't i performing to the level of my capability what's going on and then you get inside your head a lot of guys deal with this type of situation they deal with imposter syndrome they deal with like maybe i'm doing well am i doing well enough and why am i not and receiving any accolades or why am I getting treated you have to understand like for me personally stay in the moment meditate prioritize what is the most important thing for you in your life if you didn't have basketball what would you do because this life is not guaranteed to anyone you're not guaranteed to play 10 years you're not guaranteed a season. You're not guaranteed that you're going to be, you're going to not have some freak accident. At any point, this game could be over with, your, this whole career could be over with. So you might as well learn to start enjoying every part of the game in the process and the life while you're in the moment because this life is not, it's like it's, there ain't no going away party, there ain't no farewell tour. That don't be happening for a lot of players. So when it's done, it's done. And you're just another guy working at, at Walmart or working at UBS or working at Amazon. Just like that, just as quickly as you started and wondering, dang, what happened? Why didn't I enjoy the time I was over there in Thailand and when I went to China and when I was in Argentina and when I was in DR? I was so worried about trying to be so perfect. And I never even really enjoyed myself. You're over there for a reason. If you make it over there, you you're is a reason you make it over there. Enjoy it. Enjoy every aspect of it. 
it's fun. This is what you do. This is what you thrive for. This is what you live for. You know what I mean? Like this is the game that you've been playing your whole life. Just in, just say, man, thank God for the opportunity that I'm here, that I'm able to play this game in another country. I don't care where it's at. If you decide to make that choice, just enjoy every step of the way. I have a one guy that I know, um, and he he's a prime example of someone that just worked hard. He started from like low, low level, and he's just been moving himself up. And every single day, you know, every time he's like, man, I just enjoy the fact that I get to play the game of basketball and be in another country and live this life because it's so fulfilling. And don't put so much pressure on myself because it's like, bro, you really... You got people coming up to you wanting your autographs. You got people cheering you on. You got your family rooting for you because you get to live another life that they will never ever live in their lifetime. They'll never go to another country. They'll never, you know, be on the stage. They'll never have a chance to compete for a championship. They'll never get past high school. So you got, they living through you. I know him, that's my dog, that's my bro, he a pro. He in such and such country. Don't put so much pressure on yourself. Learn to enjoy it. Learn that, that, you know what, this is a blessing, it's a gift. And just keep on pushing, man. Don't put yourself so much because that pressure will get to you in this life because they will put that pressure on you to perform and just understand that you're here for a reason. Moving on. Have you ever faced racism or discrimination while playing overseas? Of course I have. And every single player that's ever played the game of basketball overseas, especially the black players, which majority of the, the imports or foreigner players are black players, just by default, you're gonna get called all kinds of names. I've been called nigga. I've been called monkey, you know? I was listening to a live of my best um, of Tap Athletics when he was on TikTok and some people were trying to add and jump into his live and he was just explaining about his situation in his life and the life that he was living over there in Zaho, Iraq. And he was like, I don't accept people on the live because everybody's going, they're going to come on here and the first thing they're going to say is you monkey and you're black and your lips is big and your nose is big and all kind of racial slurs. I even had one time I was just walking down the street and someone just said, you get out of my country. It's like an old lady. What are you doing in my country? I'm, I'm like, I'm just walking down the street, standing at a stoplight, ready to cross the street. What you doing in my country? You don't belong here. I'm just minding my business for no reason at all. Yes, it's going to happen. You can remember to stay in your own, stay in your head, understand why you're there, understand what you're here for, what is most important for you? Understand that you are here to do a job. You have to stay in your own lane and don't let that, let them words just for, like, if someone is coming at you like that, it's just showing their own insecurities of what they believe or what they have going on for themselves. A lot of people discriminate and say a lot of things and put you down just because they don't understand. They don't know you. They don't understand. They've never seen a black person before. They only know what they've seen on movies. They only know what they've seen on TV shows. They're seeing what the world news show about them. And let's just be honest, there is not a lot of good things that are shown when it comes to black men or women. They just have a perception of what the world or movies or Hollywood is shown of what the black person is, we're always cast in this bad role and we're just these hoodlums and gang members and just, bro, I, I go to church every two, three times a week. I take care of my daughter, I mind my busy, I'm, my business and I'm just trying to build a career and a life for myself. I ain't here to bother nobody or do nothing. But you feel intimidated by me just for my presence of being, having my black skin. I'm sorry if my golden brown com complexion, this royalty, offends you. I'm sorry that you feel that way, but I hope you have a blessed day and I hope everything in your life is increased and you have everything that you have and want from this day forward. Kill them with love. 
that's the only way that you that's the only way bro you just got to kill them with kindness and keep it pushing how do you plan for a life after basketball what steps are you taking to ensure the transition to a life after basketball i'm doing it right now for me personally i took the time and understand what i wanted out of life and which is for me is to create a media company that's what i'm doing right now starting a business starting a side hustle i was talking to one of my best friends at um, home we were talking about just um the i was studying to be a home inspector study for that for like two years before i started doing this upon starting doing that first that literally led me down the rabbit hole to want to starting this and finding my true passion and being able to want to speak and express and give back and talk about all the stuff that happens here that's how all this started i decided to take the opportunity to create something create a business start something that's going to transition me do not wait a lot of guys wait till the end and think i'm going to stack up the money and live off all the money that i've made in my time it's not like that it's not like that you're going to get to that money and you're going to already be expected and living this certain lifestyle and think that you can maintain this lifestyle for such a long time because you made such good money but you're not doing what you need to do when this is done and you're not making seven eight thousand dollars a month four or five thousand dollars a month untaxed that's a different lifestyle you know what i mean you get so used to that, some guys making ten, eleven thousand dollars, but they never put that money into something that makes it grow, making your money work for you, starting another business, starting another side hustle, starting another career while you're in this career. Stack on top of it. Okay, you have a steady career going on in this basketball. Now it's start it ain't gonna last forever. Look at all if you look at the NBA and all the greats, um, LeBron and all them, Kobe, what they do? They started investing. Kobe invested in Under Armour, now worth four hundred million. Because they understood, okay, I got basketball down. I'm master at this. I put my 10,000 hours in. Now, let's stack on top of that. What can I use to start taking this money? This is my main source of income. How can I take this and transition this into something that when one day it will be over with, I can take that and I can go to another level. So when I get done, I might have, I'm going to have a better financial career when I'm done because I used all this money and all this opportunity with the time that I have to learn and research and use that to advance my career when it's done. So I can live the life that I want afterward. I can transition seamlessly. I can have a, a nice transition when I'm done. I don't have to be stressing. I have to go work back. Like It's nothing like playing this game for 10, 12 years and then having to go back and work a nine to five. That is probably one of the heart, most heart-wrenching things that comes with the game. <laughs> Oh boy, that hurts. Going back and working a nine to five when you're done after playing because you get addicted to this lifestyle of freedom. I want to have my freedom, my time. I practice. We practice an hour and a half today. We went from ten. We went from ten to ten forty-five. I went to the weight room. That was optional. And then we had a little meeting from eleven to eleven thirty, and then practice was done at one twenty-five. That's not a lot. That was my day. I came home and went to sleep. And now I'm here dropping gems on the podcast. I don't want that life to stop. I'm sorry. I love it. I want it to continue. I want to be able to get up when I want to. I want to train when I want to. I want to go work out. I want to go ventures. I want to go out to eat and chill and relax. I love it. So now I'm putting in my time. Hey, thank God for this time that I have. I'm not taking advantage of it. I'm not letting it go to waste. And I'm going to just continuously grow from here. So I can have the same lifestyle when I'm done and not even the same, way better because I'm using my mind and the opportunity and the time to continue to build something while I'm at it. I was just talking to my guy yesterday. I said, look at all this free time. That's the greatest gift of the game of basketball. With this free time, you have the time to build and 100x the money that you could possibly make. Why? Because you actually have the time to sit and think for hours and hours and hours on what you need to do next and what you can transition over to that can give you the lifestyle that you really want. Moving on, man. Next question is How do you cope with the fear of career threatening injuries? What is your advice for maintaining physical? and mental resilience in such situations. 
I can speak on this one because I've actually had a career ending injury and the doctor told me straight up, I was speaking to one of my teammates today because he was having problems with his knees and he was like saying, man, I used to you show me videos like, man, I used to jump out the gym, I used to do this and now I'm to this position where I can't even really move and every day it's just the same thing and he's dealing with just issues with that. And I said, bro, I've been in the exact same situation. I looked the doctor dead in his eyes and he told me, you will never play basketball professionally again. And I speak on that a lot because that was a turning point in my life. You know, like that made me change a lot of things that I do. Looking at what kind of foods I need to eat, what type of exercises I should be really focusing on when it pertains to the life of basketball. What exercises, stretching more, all these things plays a factor in the longevity of the game, the, the recuperation, the therapy, the icing. Even now, I said it, I need to do more icing. It's just you have to start being more preventative of these situations and these injuries before they happen. A lot of times we just think we're invincible or we're just too plumb lazy to just get started in working and training our bodies to prevent against the common injuries that most players have. We don't train for preventative measures. We just train like we've been training our entire life, which is to get strong. And it's basically just to get strong. It's really with no real science to it in real action plan of why am I training this way the way that I am training. We're just doing what we're doing and because that's what we probably learned from college. That's what we learned from high school. And then when you get out of college and stuff, it is not really mandatory. Like you go like here and on our team currently, the trainer said you do whatever you want to do. You can sit in the corner all day and they don't really bother you. You can do the, your own weight room. You can go in there and do some arm, the hamstring pull down. I mean, tricep pull downs and some pull ups, do some abs and that's it. That's not protecting your body. I learned after that, after the doctor told me that, I really started diving deep because I was taking a lot of things that wasn't really helping me. I was getting a lot of shots. Um, I, I mean, I got like over, I put this in my very first book, how I got like over 40 shots in my knee of all these different types of medicines to try to help me um, mask over the pain. You're trying to put just, you're trying to put a Band-Aid on a broken leg. That's not gonna work. You have to treat it at its root. And I, the, the advice I gave to my teammate, I say, what changed my life and allowed me to play at the level that I'm playing at now and be able to continue to play because I was, I went one more season to see and I literally said, this is the season to determine whether or not I even play this game ever again. Can my knee hold up for an entire season? And I remember just sitting there at times and just laying there, knee throbbing, just in pure pain. Like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to, like, it, this might be it for me. This might be the end for me. I don't think that, honestly, that I'm going to be able to continue playing this game much longer because my knee is just it's done it's wrecked like every practice you're in excruciating pain can't move laterally you take that step your knee buckle because it's so weak it's too weak to train it's too weak to like make your movements you can't go by nobody i can't get no lift on my shot because every time i jump i feel pain like I had to understand I have if I want a career and a lifestyle for myself I need to really understand the body I need to really understand and start doing the research into the body and what I need to do like this is the vehicle that's going to take me to where I need to go to take care of my family to take care of and build my career and build my dreams so I need to be more attentive and take care of that and understand how it works and how to protect it and be per and understand the preventative measures of what I need to do. And I told him straight up, bro, 
the biggest thing is what I put into my body. You can do all this outside and all this, but it's really determined on what you put into your body. I spoke on this last time. I have one of my best friends right now. He went up for a layup and he broke three ribs. Didn't even know. Never even knew he had that problem. Just went up for a layup. Come, came down, exited the game. They went and got an x-ray. Three fractured ribs. You just don't know. Your body could just break down at any point. I could be one on it. He don't really like to lift weights. I had a cousin of mine. He told me he went through a whole season with a torn shoulder, with um, rotator cup or something. For a whole season, couldn't play. Could barely lift his arm. Every time it got a little bit better, it got messed up again. Well, let's look at your lifestyle. You don't like to really stretch. Or you do mediocre stretching. Don't really ice. Do not lift weights. I, that's one thing I don't understand is the basketball player or professional or any athlete who do not lift weights. Weights is like medicine. You have to start watching what you put into your body. Drinking more water. Like, it's so many things to make the body just like this, this machine that you're trying to oil in, put the right parts, and you want it to work, and you want to put 100, go 100 miles per hour, but you're not getting the oil change and going and getting maintenance and making sure that you replace the wheels on it and the tire, the threads are running, um, the tire threads are running low, and you just, oh, I'm gonna just keep riding. No, that tire's gonna pop. You're gonna be riding on some bad tires. And you have to understand that you have to take care of that. You have to take care of your feet, your body. You have to ice. You have to eat properly. You have to watch what you put into your body. You gotta cut out some of the junk food. Eat more fruit. Drink more water. Buy a stem machine. Buy um, air compression boots. Invest into yourself so you can go further and have the career that you want because at any given time it can be over with because you just don't realize it in the moment you don't realize in the moment that something is wrong and that's isn't that how it always is you just be just cruising along thinking everything good and boom blew out a tire blew out something hamstring because you don't never stretch and you don't there's so many sports science today. There's so many people that's teaching on how to strengthen the body and develop the body and how to move. Pick up a book on your own. There's, okay, there's a book right now. It's called How to Become a Supple Leopard. That body is all about how you break down, how the body's made, how you should sit, how you should move. When like It completely breaks down how the body moves and works. If you're really serious about having longevity, oh well, I know somebody that was he ain't did none of that and he had a great career in this. Comparison is the killer of joy. Don't compare yourself to nobody else. Do all that you can to take care of yourself, your body, your health. Because if your health is not, and if your health is not good, you're not going to be able to ver get very far in this game. And I want you to get far. I'm trying to, I'm 10 years in and I'm feeling like I, I got to easily if I wanted to another 10 because I understand how and what are the things I need to protect my body. I no longer have to like, okay, I need to do this to be super strong in this. No, I need to be more flexible. For me, it's all about flexibility now because you're going to be, you're not, we're not bodybuilders, basketball players. You need to understand how to, your body moves and the joints. You're using all these motions. You need to learn how to stretch, how they move, understand the hips, understand why this issue is. I understood so much when you go through something. Like I understood so much when going through that, uh, that ordeal with my knee. I understand how the hips is connected to the knee and how the hamstrings, like right now my hamstrings is tight. And I understand that's because I need to open up my hips more and I need to do more yoga and I need to start being more flexible flexible in this area because if not that's going to lead to you having ankle injuries and how all of this is connected that going to lead to your back all these various things and i every now and i just see people ask hey how do you do this and why is it hey man this is your life this is your career start being more take care of it be like really take care of it 
You're not invincible. We're not invincible. We, but we can be preventative and take care of our greatest asset, which is our body. Moving on. Have you ever been in a situation where you're asked to throw a game for money? I have never been in a situation like that, but I have been in situations where I've seen guys betting on games and wanting to like come up off of games and saying, hey, we need to win by this much and we need to do this. It's the world we live in now. I had friends that people came to them and said, hey, we trying to do this, what you trying to do? I'm definitely not name dropping on anybody, but these situations occur all the time. And I was speaking on this the other day. It's like, I can't even lie to you. It does look enticing. Like, oh, we, you know they finna lose. They call it run the parlay. I'm about to go, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to run the parlay and catch me one. I understand where I'm going at in my life that I know who my source is, which is God, and all my money, all my abundance and wealth comes from Him. And I'm not putting that in the hands of nobody else or definitely into something that I don't have control over. What I have control over is my knowledge and my wealth of what I have and what I'm trying to pursue. I study a lot of the stock market, I study a lot of wealth, wealth building, and I'm starting to understand a lot of things in growing the wealth and, and how the money works and the history of money. That's just me personally. And I personally am not gonna put my source into making a quick come up me personally i'm building wealth that i haven't really read in all the autobiographies of all the people and all the money books of people getting their wealth by being running parlays or throwing i put too much into this game to for me personally i just put too much into this game i can't speak for nobody else hey they put it they put they work in they achieve whatever they can they have achieved whatever level, NBA, EuroLeague, whatever. And if that's what you feel like you need to do, you go ahead. Me personally, I'm never going to partake in that. I just can't. And I'll be lying if I say it's not enticing. It does. Hey, man, it, I'm not going to lie. It looks it look like, dang, that's a, that's a quick lit. But my priorities tell me what I really, what am I really doing here? What is my main objective? And I think that when we start answer, asking ourselves the real question of what is your main objective? What are you really wanting out of this life? You know, what are you really searching for out of this life more than basketball? I, I'm not throwing no shit. If that's what you do and that's how you, you know what I'm saying? Hey man, I got a system, I could do this and that and that's how you able to make your money and do that. No shade, that's your life, I'm not here to tell anybody what they should do with their life and how they should navigate their life. Look, man, that's, um, I'm gonna end it there with the Q&A. That's pretty much all the Q&A questions I got. Hopefully this helps you if you guys have any other questions that you want to know like about the game or you just something, you know, DM me, write me in the comments, whatever. I'll try to get back to them. And when I have another Q&A segment, I'll try to go over the questions. But these are some of the questions that that I personally be wanting to know when I was first starting my career and for guys who's entering the career in this day and age in 2024 that you might want to know and think about like starting your career how to navigate that these some hopefully these questions you may have someone may have asked or you might have wanted to know well I hope this helped you to maybe I've answered it for you man look thank you for tuning in Make sure you subscribe, hit me a like, follow, man. Till next time. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to the show. Please subscribe on our YouTube, Spotify, Apple, and wherever you listen to your podcast. I greatly appreciate it. 